Maniacs, welcome back to the channel, your local bedhead here. Today we are going to be diving into a channel that you guys might be pretty familiar with, and that is Beardo Gets Scared. Opinions, he's really grown on me. I, I genuinely love honesty. Even if you don't agree with every single one of their opinions, even if you have issues with everything they're saying about some of your favorite content creators, you have to admit it's pretty honorable to stick to your guns. Um, even when you know people are not going to like what you have to say. There's not a lot of people out in the world who will do this. And those people deserve a lot of admiration, especially when we actually have proof that there could be some shady shit going on. Now look, you guys know me when it comes to fake paranormal channels. I don't really have an issue with them, depending on how they handle it. If they're vocal about it and honest about fakery, then I got no issues. You know, those channels can be really fun. There's a lot of them. Really fun fake channels that have to do with the paranormal. My issue with paranormal channels that fake, with, you know, certain channels that fake, if it is there, is that you're treating your audiences like idiots. Because there are a lot of people, whether they want to acknowledge this or not, because, you know, their, their fandom is much greater than how they truly feel about being lied to. Even they'll be okay with being lied to. When in reality, most people don't like that. It's just not a good feeling. Nobody wants to be lied to by some of your favorite content creators. You want to feel like you can trust everything they say. You, and that's something that you just don't feel when certain things start coming out. You'll start taking a step back and looking and being like, Oh, so you're not as honest as I thought you were. So that's why I, I highly recommend if you ever start a YouTube channel, be honest. Just be honest with your audience. Be courteous of their feelings. Be courteous of their viewpoints. You got to be you, of course. Be you 100%. But don't lie to your audience. Don't lie to your audience for the sake of gaining views. Please don't. It's going to backfire. I already know it's going to backfire one day. Just don't be that person. And if you are lying, be honest about it. If, if you are faking stuff, be honest about it. And again, it, it makes you look like you're treating your audience like a bunch of idiots. Like they can buy what, whatever we throw at them. They'll buy it no matter what. And people who say that they have no issues with fakery, in some cases, are full of it. I don't believe that's the truth. Because there's a lot of people who were on those videos saying how scary that was, how creepy that was. Oh my God, that is terrifying. I would have cried if that situation ever happened to me. So there's a sense of you that still does buy it. There's a sense of you that still believes in everything you see through certain videos. And that's the, that's the point. They're, they got you. They're, they're fooling you still. Even if you don't want to acknowledge it. And even if you say things like, even if they are fake, I watch them for entertainment purposes. Okay, fair enough. So you are acknowledging then that they are fake and you're okay with it. And that's one thing. Like your, don't use your opinion and drag other people in to agree with you. Because I'm sure there are a lot of people who feel the same way as a lot of these debunkers. Where it's like, that is kind of fucked up when you sit back and look at it. Now my issue with Sam and Colby of lately, you guys know this, is that in one of their recent vi interviews, they defend Satori and Cody. And I don't care what you say, yes they were. I know there's a lot of people in the audience saying... They weren't defending Satori and Cody. No, guys, they were. Now, I have not seen their most recent interview, which apparently they apparently said, at least somebody in my live stream said last night, that it sounded like they weren't defending them and they were unsure about them. Now their answers are changing. It just looks weird at that point. Like, if you had any ounce of any sort of anything, even Sam and Colby purist don't buy in Satori and Cody anymore. So why are you guys still defending them, even if your audience is completely against them? I've been through their comment section of recently, and a lot of people are hurt by this whole controversy because they just don't, they don't like being taken advantage of. They don't like being lied to. And the fact of the matter is most of us, we believed it at first. So it even hits harder for us. We don't want that to be a reoccurring issue, even if it has nothing to do with Satori and Cody. Let's throw them to the side for a second. Nobody wants to be lied to. So just keep that in mind. When I say these things, when I'm giving my honest opinion about this, it's not even all about Satori and Cody, who, of course, you know, got caught in a scam, got caught in a con, right? Has not necessarily everything to do with them. It's the concept alone that I have an issue with. I like these guys. They're entertaining as fuck. And I'm curious to hear what Beardo has to say about them. But if you're saying shit like that, which I've already criticized Satori and Cody for saying very similar things, I'm not going to hold my thoughts back. I'm going to be upfront and honest. I hope we get more YouTubers who do that. So let's go ahead and dive into Beardo's video. I'll, of course, tell you guys what I think during and after the video. If, Ken, if you're not, go subscribe to Beardo. Get scared. The guy is on the roll. He's on a he's on a roll, man. He's almost 35,000 subs. He's kicking ass. So please get him there. 
let's go ahead and dive into this video and I give you guys give you guys I'll give you guys my thoughts during and after the video. So Sam and Colby have had one of the most controversial paranormal series ever. Released on YouTube in October of 2023. The Conjuring House. Hell Week. Beardos, weirdos, boils and ghouls, how are we all doing? Something very different for you today. I'm not in the studio. I'm actually sat elsewhere in the house. So I've got I some that. studio lighting set up. Two camera angles. Just to try and make this look a little bit different. And we're going to have a lot of footage played from the numerous issues surrounding this event. So join me as we delve into the origins of this terrifying location. Of this huge YouTube event. The involvement of renowned paranormal investigators Ed and Lorraine Warren. And the unsettling truth behind one of the most notorious figures, Bathsheba Sherman. Add to that, at the end of this video, my own investigation at the ancient Ramin, which will ultimately prove once and for all that despite what their fans say, Sam and Colby are fake. And Sam and Colby are in fact liars. The Conjuring Oh House. shit. Okay. So, I mean, you know, you sound pretty confident. Okay. All right. And of course, you know, me being me, I'm not biased. So I will... I will hear you out and hear what you have to say. This could get me a lot of hate. It could. It could because I have a lot of people who are a part of my community that are huge Sam and Colby fans. A huge part of my community are Sam and Colby fans. A lot of, I owe a lot to Sam and Colby for bringing over their, you know, doing reactions, their audience coming over and watching my channel. This could get me a lot of hate, but you got to keep in mind, I, I'm just not one of those people who's just going to be one-sided on this. If he has pretty interesting proof or pretty interesting points to make about Sam and Colby doing fakery, I'm curious to hear it. I am. Or will I be what people typically think of people like me? Do I want to see Sam and Colby canceled? Not at all. No. No. And nor nor will they. Guys, keep in mind too, Sam and Colby are a 10 million subscriber channel. They are not going down. It, it, it just is what it is. They're not going to go down. Even if they were 100% proved as fake tomorrow, right, or today, they still wouldn't go down. They have a massive audience who still loves them, who still find them insanely entertaining and likable. And by God, they are very entertaining and likable. Hell, even if they weren't doing paranormal stuff, I said this many times, they would still be as popular because of all their explore stuff. They very much resonate with a lot of audiences today. Okay, will I still continue my Sam and Colby reactions? Yeah, I will. Um, if they are proven fake, will I ever take anything they uh, say seriously anymore? Probably not. <laughs> Probably not, but I just that's just me. Okay, if they are proven to be fake ever, like 100%, I cannot question anything anymore. I just wouldn't take anything they say legitimately anymore when it comes to the paranormal. I wouldn't take anything they say seriously. And would they be on the top 10 best paranormal investigators of all time list anymore? Nope. Because to me, paranormal investigators are people who actually want real answers, not fake answers for views. So no, they would not be in my top 10 favorite paranormal investigators of all time list. Nor should they. Nor should they. Would they have lost all my respect for that? Yeah. Yeah. That's just me being honest. I, Of course they would. Doing the paranormal is a very, very touchy subject. You are talking about people who have who are deceased. I mean, these people who are, you know, who are long gone in some of these houses have relatives who are alive today and probably show a lot of respect to their 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 ancestors. You're faking shit for views and you're making it come off like the relatives are speaking through you guys. And again, this is not just within Sam and Colby. This could be said for like Ghost Adventures. I mean, all these different paranormal channels who want to fake shit for views. This is not a good thing. Entertaining or not. This is a disrespectful thing to do. As much fun as the paranormal is, as, mu as much f as crazy as it can get, this is a very touchy thing. Like true crime, I mean, you are dealing with people who have been, who existed on this planet. And that's one of the reasons why twin paranormal get shit talked a lot, is because they always say there could be bodies buried on this property, or when they start accusing, or start accusing people who are long gone of possibly being murderers. And we'll get into that. Remember the whole Bathsheba Sherman thing. There was actually no physical evidence that Bathsheba Sherman was a, a murderer of an infant. There was no proof of that. There was no proof she was involved with witchcraft. But unfortunately, because of the words of Lorraine Warren, now everybody believes, or for the most part people believe, that Bathsheba Sherman is an evil entity and should be labeled as so. She's a witch. She's evil. When that was never even the case. She was never proven to be any of those things. So, and, and her grave was desecrated, which is disgusting behavior. So disrespectful, especially when we don't even know the facts. As great as that Hollywood movie is, The Conjuring is an amazing flick. What it did to Bathsheba Sherman was shit on her reputation. As much as I love that movie, 
Oh, and God, trust me, I love The Conjuring. I love the first Conjuring movie. Oh, man, it's it's a beautiful haunted house movie. Again, dealing with the paranormal, there has to be a fine line of knowing when enough is enough. What you are doing is it, it could be tampering with some serious shit. And it would have been one thing if they are doing this, but also kind of making it known to their audience that we do not know if this is legitimate or not. But they never say that. All they say is, this could possibly be a murder mystery. That shit is dangerous when you're accusing people of murder and being involved with hiding bodies and, and shit like that and like treating it like a murder mystery through a phone app. Holy shit, what are you doing? At least put a disclaimer that you are not 100% sure if this is even true or not, but you're actually like not even saying that and now your audience is like, oh, but there could be something there. There could be actually the possibility. It, it could be insanely dangerous. Yeah. So faking with the paranormal doesn't mix well in my personal opinion. And, and just because you are nice people in person, that doesn't mean it's automatically okay to start labeling people who are long gone as this, that, and this, right? So just keep that in mind. This is one of the, again, one of the reasons why faking paranormal is just dangerous. It is just an overall, it will have a massive impact on your career later on if you are caught faking. Located in Harrisville, Rhode Island. It was originally built in the 1800s by the Arnold family. And over the years, the property has seen its fair share of tragic events including suicides, drownings, mysterious deaths, rumours of soldiers buried in the walls. And this has earned the building a reputation for being a hotbed of paranormal activity. So in with this hotbed of activity, enter Ed and Lorraine Warren, the pioneers of the paranormal investigation field. In the 1970s, a family called the Perrin family had moved into the Arnold estate, the Conjuring House. And I'm not going to delve too deep into that history because you all know it. Yes, I and do. And this was all then chronicled in a movie called The Conjuring, where the Warrens battled malevolent spirits and demonic forces haunting the household. Only the movie, whilst being a great horror movie, has a bit of a cheek to call itself based on true events. Yeah. And of course, <laughs> the story focuses more on Ed and Lorraine Warren, who, in my opinion who are not the pioneers of the paranormal investigation field. They are just the greatest scammers of the paranormal world. The biggest con mm. artists since the Fox sisters. And I feel it's important to talk about Bathsheba Sherman, the villain of the movie. But in the real world, not so much. You see, central to the Conjuring House's dark history, a woman accused of witchcraft and malevolent acts. Born in the 19th century, Bathsheba lived on the Arnold Estate grounds and was rumoured to have pra practiced dark rituals. There's a whole host of stories that you can get from the Conjuring movie and through various paranormal investigations at the property. She was apparently linked to the deaths of several children and ultimately suspicions led to her being a witch. But the truth about Bathsheba Sherman is very different to what's portrayed in the movie. While legend portrays Bathsheba to be a witch, to be malevolent, to be evil, Historical records paint a very different picture. There is very little concrete evidence to support any claims of Bathsheba being involved in witchcraft. Or evidence is key. If you don't have physical evidence, then you're just going off of someone's word. And that's not good enough. It is heartbreaking, man, when I sit back and just look at... It. Put yourself in the shoes of Bathsheba Sherman for a second. Imagine you didn't do anything. Imagine you didn't do anything. And then all of a sudden, years down the road, you find out they make a movie and your name gets brought up by a couple of paranormal investigators and guess what happens? You are now labeled as a murderer and a witch. A person who was who was supposed killed an infant with a sewing needle. Absolutely insanity. And it is, it's not deserved because there is no proof. And yes, we need proof. We can't just label someone as something and just accept that. That's what they did back in the Salem witch trials, by the way. They would accuse a random women of witchcraft, and guess what would happen? They would die. So, so saying that Bathsheba Sherman was a witch, okay? Saying she was a witch, and, and then labeling her as an evil entity or an evil person, and we should not be celebrating this person. This person needs to have their grave desecrated. We need to go after this person 100%. You're no different than the people who falsely accused women of witchcraft back in the days of Salem, who got women killed, who got women completely, their reputations completely ruined. So please just keep in mind that if you're going to start pointing fingers, you gotta have evidence. 
or any of the allegations against her. And historians suggest that Bathsheba was just a victim of slander and superstition from the time. Nevertheless, her name has become synonymous with the Conjuring House, perpetuating her legacy as a sinister figure. Thanks, Hollywood. Well done, Ed and Lorraine. Enter Sam and Colby. I imagine anyone that watches the paranormal on YouTube, whether you watch Sam and Colby or not, you're aware of who Sam and Colby are. 11 million subscribers the last time I looked. They are a juggernaut of, par of the paranormal yeah. for YouTube. They're originally known for skits, comedy videos, and um, exploration videos, and then later the paranormal investigations and vlogs. They gained popularity in the early 2010s with the comedic skits and challenges that were uploaded to Vine before they transitioned over to YouTube. The duo gaining attention for their daring explorations, often venturing into abandoned buildings and documenting their experiences. And this content evolved to include paranormal investigations where they claim to encounter supernatural phenomena everywhere they go. But Sam and Colby haven't been without controversy in the past. And yes, I understand they were young when they started and when you're young, you make mistakes. I did, you yep. did, they yep. did. 100%. Fair enough. They were caught trespassing and ultimately arrested for it. In 2015, they, they faced a lot of criticism and backlash for allegedly trespassing into a building and causing property damage. And as we've seen in recent times, they're not so respectful. Not just that. I'm pretty sure they got caught. Like, they actually went to what was supposedly a, an abandoned building, but it was on, like, a property where they were still, like, having school and stuff, like an elementary school or something. And they called the police, and the police showed up and, like, threw them to the ground and see all that craziness. Craziness. Yeah, they they really fucked up in that situation, yeah. Yeah, they broke into pretty much an old building that was on the property of, like, an old elementary school. And the police showed up, and, yeah, yeah they got busted. ...of people's property and buildings. In 2019, Sam and Colby faced further backlash and criticism for a controversial series called The Origin, where they explored supposed locations cursed in origin. Critics accused them of exploiting tragedies for views and clicks, and for sensationalising it all through these paranormal investigations. It felt too set up. Yeah, it felt way too set up. I'm sorry. I know there's going to be some Sam and Colby fans who are going to be in here who love their original stuff, and my God, I, I, I love and appreciate you. I really do. Um, trust me, I do. At the time, even I who believed in Sam and Colby 100% for being legitimate paranormal investigators, I thought that series, The Origin, was way too set up. It really felt like they were trying to aim for like some sort of YouTube miniseries or something like that. Like it was just scripted and everything, like this little box that had something in it and it was in there it was in Sam's like old closet and it's like, oh what if we actually go through the origins of this and like wherever it came from, let's take it back to the you know, the, the place that we got it. It just felt too like that doesn't happen. <laughs> that never happens in real life. It felt, yeah, just way too scripted. Controversy, Sam and Colby remain giants in the paranormal community on YouTube. And then on Halloween 2023, Sam and Colby released the Hell Week series, where they stayed at the previously mentioned Conjuring House. They stayed there for a full week. And what happened in this week-long investigation of the Conjuring House, upon its release in October 2023, will probably go down in history as one of the most controversial paranormal episodes, series, and fallout ever to grease YouTube. Instead of a highly celebrated paranormal investigation into a renowned haunted location. Instead of breaking the boundaries and breaking new ground, instead viewers were treated to the usual Sam and Colby show. The usual shtick. These two guys and then groups of their friends turning up to a haunted location, reading equipment wrong, reading the room wrong, and ultimately making content that was no different to anything else they've ever put out. And through all of this, all of the guests, all of the people that turned up, their investigation bared very little relevance to any of the reported hauntings of the Arnold estate. And of course, we can't mention that week and the fallout without mentioning Cody and Satori. I'm not going to get too deep into it because I've said a lot. A lot of other people have said a lot. This drama is still rearing its head with... Cody and Satori claiming their innocence, claiming that they're real, and anyone with any sense of critical thinking skills, calling them out for what they are. So instead of this huge celebration of one of the biggest paranormal investigations to take place, which is what 
we were alluded to was going to happen, we end up in the entire week becoming mad in controversy. So controversial in fact that new debunking channels have popped up everywhere and fair play to them. Pre-existing debunking channels are having a massive influx of viewership and in true YouTube style. The Sam and Colby fan base, the XPLR, they went on the attack. Oh the yeah. The debunkers, they were threatened, belittled, mass reported. TikToks were made of people threatening to beat up a certain bearded debunker with baseball bats. My own TikTok no, channel, man. which was just about gaming clips, was mass reported to the point where I lost it. My channel was taken away from me. The entire thing got so out of hand that Sam and Colby, exploring with Josh and others, had to come forward and get involved and speak about what the debunkers had brought to light. This was huge for the debunking community. And I'll be fair, exploring with Josh was far more critical in his thinking, where he sat and questioned, I don't know if I believe them anymore. The debunkers have brought some things out that I need to look at things. Huge props. And I didn't mean to laugh right there. It's just crazy that they actually went that far. So before anybody freaks out, I wasn't laughing at Beardo for getting threatened. No, I just, that's crazy that it literally got brought into the point where they were threatening to beat him with baseball bats because he was just against the whole thing, the whole Satori and Cody thing, and the and being a debunker. Absolutely maddening, sickening. I already said in my live stream last night, if you have to go straight to beating someone up or threatening their lives over an opinion and, and a, dis a discussion video and, and just a disagreeing with somebody, you are a serious problem. I would get checked immediately. I would get help if you feel like you have to go directly onto that level of like, you need to shut your mouth or I'm going to fucking kill you or beat you up or holy smokes, get a life. No way. Even if someone came out with a video of me today saying how much they hate my guts and how, much, how wrong I am, I would encourage my audience not to even go over there and, and, and lessen themselves. Of course not. Of course not. To me, that's what immediately happens. The second you bring in death threats or beating someone up, you've already lost the discussion. If you have to go that far. I'm sorry that you got threatened, man. I hate that for you. I really do. Um, and also to give props to Exploring with Josh, which he's doing again. Exploring with Josh got shit for this, man. Which goes to show how, how toxic that, that fan base can be. Any fan base can be toxic. But man, they really went after people. Yeah, just because Satori and Cody appeared in a Sam and Colby video and somebody had a disagreement about it, like someone like Exploring with Josh, who has done collaborations with Sam and Colby, automatically everybody started calling Josh a coward. He was chicken shit. He's saving his own ass. He's doing all this stuff. And it's like, what are you guys talking about? He All he said was he just wasn't sure if he bought it or not. And now he wanted to give credit to the debunkers, which I think more paranormal channels should have done to begin with. Sam and Colby were encouraging debunkers to come out with videos. And guess what? Guess what happened? Colby comes out on a podcast and says they tried to debunk it. What the fuck are you, was he even talking about? Tried to debunk it. These people who weren't even there in person did a hell of a lot better of a job to debunk Satori and Cody than Sam and Colby ever did in their video. And they tried to debunk it? But your guys' methods of trying to debunk Satori and Cody in your mind was... Oh, we can't question that. We don't know what it is. We, we have no idea. To us, it felt legitimate. But these guys who sat down for hours, watched all of your evidence, watched all of your content, went back and found evidence of them doing it long before then, Cody specifically, of course, Cody, um, was not good enough. Uh, yeah, exploring with Josh and then him sharing the, the old footage of Satori and Cody doing the method. Huge props to exploring with Josh. Big deal on his part. Things that I need to assess. And Sam and Colby bumbled their way through some half-assed debunking attempt. The only way to have proved that it wasn't the feet tapping was to get Cody and Satori to lift their feet up in the air. And they didn't. They give them slippers, but they were still stood with their body weight planted on the floor. And Sam and Colby's attempt to debunk caused even more controversy than what it started in the first place. I mean, how does a ghost spell its own name wrong? All of this even led to Jason Hawes, Satori's dad, Jason Hawes Ghost Hunters fame, responding in a bid to stand up for his daughter in a video that again caused the debunkers to rally against cries of toxicity, of nastiness, of horrible things, and more importantly, against the claims of hate, whilst we were the guys being threatened just for critical thinking. And so I responded on behalf of the community against toxicity to fight these claims of why we are toxic. And I called out Jason Hawes and his words against the debunkers because a lot of us debunkers cite him as our one of our reasons for debunking. 
And then what happened was Jason Hawes. Yeah, Jason Hawes, dude, used to debunk everything. He used to actually get up on, like, step stools and look inside the ceiling to make sure there wasn't any setups and stuff. He was a master debunker. A lot of props to Jason Hawes, of course. You know, I, I really respect the shit out of that guy, too. And his response video was classy as hell uh, when he was talking about debunkers and how, you know, things. And look, I agree. Some people don't need to get toxic about it. There are a lot of people who went on attack mode against Satori and Cody. Look, I have acknowledged that I was pissed off. I will acknowledge that I have said that that method is disgusting. It's fucked up. I have said that 100%, and I stand by that. But people who are going after Satori and Cody and, again, sending, sending death threats and, and saying that, you know, you guys, are, you guys are like human scum and shit like that, that's not necessary. Okay, we're, we're just calling them out simply because they are fooling people and they are and they're doing what they're doing. But we don't need to go any higher than that. We don't need to send death threats. We don't need to fucking make them feel like they are the worst human beings imaginable. This is just calling out fakery for fakery. That's what it is. That's what it's all been. It's, it's been in, about the entire time. And we can under anybody with any ounce of any sort of mind can understand why Jason made that first video, that first um, video going over the controversy. He was defending his kid. Even he self acknowledged that he was defending. He was defending his kid because there was a lot of people going after Story and Cody, sending death threats and being very horrible and disgusting. And again, once you start doing that, you are no better than what they are doing. You are completely below them. Death threats are not the answer. Just not. Okay. Um. And again, this goes to show that you should not lie. Uh, just don't lie because it's going to backfire on you. Actually responded not only to me in a written statement, he emailed me. And then he put out his own video where he apologized to me, the community, and the other debunkers for things he said being... For things he said not quite being what he meant. For things that could have quite easily been taken out of context. I respected it. I appreciated it. And it culminated with Jason Hawes basically stating that he believes that the debunkers are not only relevant, but needed. Cody Satori yep. this time seemingly went into hiding. Nothing much was said. There was some blanket statement that annoyed a lot of people because it didn't cover any of the, the issues raised. Until Project Fear released their Conjuring House visit which was filmed a while ago but released much later than Sam and Colby's video after all of the controversy and there was an immediate backlash and this backlash was to the point that it wasn't just the debunkers calling out Cody and Satori it was the fans Project Fear it got to the point where Project Fear felt they had to sit down with Cody and Satori and in the credit and in and to the credit of Project Fear they interviewed Cody and Satori, and they asked some of the hard questions that the debunkers and the paranormal field at large wanted to know. But the end result was just more of the same, more claims of debunkers being toxic, the community being... Yeah, that was the thing, is that Project Fear, they had all the right questions. They were asking everything that we wanted to know, but they weren't pushing it enough, right? They started to really just kind of die down once uh, Satori and Cody kind of went on and did their thing. They really should have pushed some of these questions a bit farther. And I got to give respect to Pe Project Fear on that. I know, I, I know Beardo uh, says that Project Fear had been caught faking and stuff, and I have not seen that evidence. Maybe I have to, that, maybe I should look into that. But I will appreciate what Project Fear tried to do, which is awesome. Now, if they are fakers themselves and they're calling out other fakers, I think that's extremely hypocritical because not a lot of people were doing it, especially people who are paranormal investigators, not debunkers, but paranormal investigators. So I, I do got to give credit being toxic, avoiding certain questions, ref refusing to prove once and for all whether it was toe tapping or not by simply removing their shoes and socks. Satori went as far as to say the reason she would not take off her shoes and socks was she doesn't want her feet on the internet for all to see because there are some weirdos out there. But a quick look at her Instagram showed photos of her barefoot, there are videos of her in flip flops. Another lie. We were never ever interested in your feet, Satori. It's Cody's. Because yeah, Cody that was weird. She she started talking like, and she was doing this a lot during the Project Fear interview, where she was starting to take credit and starting to talk like people were questioning her about popping her toes. We already know it wasn't her. It's Cody doing it. Everybody's questioning Cody. They want to see his his feet, not yours. So the fact that she kept making it about her, I'm not wanting to do this, that, and this, and you know we shouldn't be... Cody is the one people are questioning more of because he's the one with all the controversy surrounding him, for the most part. He is the one that is tapping and knocking and popping his joints. Yep. What Satori did there was deflection from Cody. And then, yep. in a final bid to shut up us critical thinkers, 
the cancer card was played. Now, it is documented Cody did once suffer cancer. Yes, he did. But to say that he couldn't possibly pop a joint. Yeah, I actually did my own research, too. I actually did look up, look up and uh, whatnot, and I did find, yeah, he did have cancer. No, he didn't. But for that to be the reason is ridiculous. It's ridiculous why he can't pop his joints. Makes no effing sense whatsoever or crack his toes or pop a ligament because of cancer when he was a teenager is ridiculous and there is no proof out there to Again, suggest that he's treating audiences like they're idiots like they would actually buy into that it's just it's so stupid it's like why would you even say that what he said there in regards to the aftermath is true what they claim the cancer caused with cody is medically not sound information so back to Sam and Colby. One of the biggest criticisms of us debunkers, and of me especially, was that we proved nothing. That we failed to prove Sam and Colby faked anything. We only proved or brought into question Cody and Satori. I mean, the magical staff member's head coming out, up out of a staircase from a basement where Sam and Colby claimed to be alone. That wasn't proof enough. Some arguments against that were even, that's the ghost of the broke neck lady. That's, that's right, the argument was, Broke neck lady was. I actually took a picture. Um, I took the picture of that head and I brightened it up and everything, and I put it right next to the producer's head, and they had the same exact hairline, and you could even see his glasses. It was 100% the producer, and even then, people were still saying it was a shapeshifter. I would have been more of a believer in that if had it it been for him ducking down the second he noticed that they were filming. He wa he walked up there and he noticed they were filming and he ducked down. That's exactly what he did. It was captured on camera by Sam and Colby, escaping from that basement, and they didn't draw attention to it, they flipped the camera up away. They cut away from a ghost. In editing, definitely not this staff. <laughs> to end this entire history on the Hell Week, Sam and Colby, are they real, are they fake, all of the rest of it. And to answer to the claims that the debunkers have never debunked Sam and Colby, I'd like to provide the biggest debunk there is on them. You see, at the Conjuring House, a lot of people stated in my comment sections, you can't debunk this investigation because you have never been there. But I'll tell you where... Uh, that is the stupidest excuse ever. Sorry to any hardcore Sam and Colby fans, but that is not a good argument. Oh, but but just because you were not there, that means you can't debunk them. Right? Could I have been? I've recently been to the ancient Ram Inn and captured some wonderful sounds on camera that I easily explained exactly where those sounds came from. And while I was there, I captured the sound of what sounded like a baby or a child coughing. But what it was in fact was a woman outside the building coughing. I debunked my own evidence. I mean, it'll naturally go quieter as the night goes on, but it's not a bad idea. Mm. I'm gonna have to. Bad idea. Mm. I'm gonna have to. Bad idea. Mm. I'm gonna have to. Yeah. Bad idea. Mm. I'm gonna have to. Bad idea. Mm. I'm gonna have to. Not a ghost. Despite this sounding like a baby coughing, it was in fact a woman outside coughing or being sick. Cough it up. <laughs> <laughs> because I'm a critical thinker, logical, paranormal investigator. Yep, and if he if he really wanted to, if he wanted to fake it, he could have just said, did you guys hear that? Did you guys really hear that? They automatically go straight to the ghost, right? They automatically go straight to the ghost. Then later on in the night, we heard kids' voices. And they were kids' voices. So on my video, I look out the window, and there's two kids, literally three to four foot lower than where I am because the ancient Ram Inn is set below the road. The building is so old that the first floor is only a couple of feet higher up than the pavement. <coughs> oh yeah, the curtains work fine. So Christ, they're old. <laughs> oh no, we've got a company. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> Sam and Colby having the same experience as me describe having these experiences on the second floor. And there is no way they could possibly be hearing voices from outside because they were too high up. I mean, firstly, they, they were on the- They did say that. They did. There's like no way we could hear voices. We're like all the way up here. Yeah. First off, if the house is that old, those windows are probably pretty thin too. So, and it sounded like those voices were pretty clear. <sighs> First floor, the ground floor level, is actually under street level. The living room, kitchen, and then the bar area. Then you go up the stairs to the first floor where the bishop's room and the witch's room is. The 
Bishop's room being the room that looks out onto the main road. Like a horse's hoof, and it was actually stuffed up the chimney. And what it was actually used for was as. What, what the, the fuck? fuck? Was what the fuck was that? That just fell off. What? Wow! Wait, was that? Was that yeah, one? somebody else? Hello? That actually gave me chills. That was... Hello? Hello? Can you just look out the window? Can you yeah, just check that that was like. Are we on the second story? Um, well, okay, wait. That no, was a we girl. Check outside that there was a girl. Do you genuinely believe that was probably a kid on the road, or do you think that was actually something in here? Uh, I would say it's something in here. Oh my what? god, oh dude! My god. That's not... <sighs> yeah, looking back on that, and then hearing Beardo actually say this stuff, and then hearing the voices as clear as that. For all we know, they could have been like, Hello? And the kid, if there was a kid out there, they'd probably be like, Oh shit, and they probably ran off. If they heard them, and it wouldn't surprise me if they did hear them say that, because they, if you can hear them in there, you probably hear from, you know, vice versa. <laughs> so. Sam and Colby also failed to mention that there is a sign as soon as you walk into the kitchen of the property through the main door that states, turn off the lights and close the curtains while you're investigating, because the local children will play up. And we experienced this because in the earlier parts of our investigation, we had the lights on and the curtains open, and it led to me debunking the sounds from this house. Sam and Colby lied. They lied about the position of the room, especially in regards to how close it was to street level. They lied about the fact that you can, in fact, hear every noise from outside because the window frames are all rotten. There's gaps in them. It's single-paned, really old glass. You can clearly hear things coming from outside. You can see daylight through bottoms of some of these window frames noise from this first floor bleeds in so to sam and colby fans to the xplr to the people that threatened me that mocked me that said i couldn't debunk sam and colby that i've never debunked sam and colby there's your evidence there's your debunk and you cannot argue with this while you may attempt to you will be able to prove nothing because because in your own words you didn't investigate the ancient ramen I did. So there you are. True facts. Damn. And Simon Colby can ignore. That's like a mic drop moment right there for you. Like, like, yeah. Yeah. And I know the side eye guy is going to be going to the conjuring house soon. So right there. Yeah, that should, that told me a lot, actually. Thank you, Beardo. That actually told me a lot. I'll be the first one to say as a Sam and Colby fan myself, thank you, actually. That clears that up. Certainly makes Sam and Colby not look as legitimate as you want him to look, does it? Failing to mention certain things like that. Because I, I certainly feel like an idiot now because I trusted everything they said in that Haunted Ram N video. I just I took their word for it because I do that. I'm a guy who takes their word for it. I give a lot of leeway. And they, yeah, they did not mention that the, the street was that close to the window. And they did not mention the sign that said there were kids that could make a lot of noise. Me and they can ignore the fact that their community threatened, belittled, berated, and mass reported anyone that said anything different against Sam and Colby. The true fact is that Sam and Colby are fake and they cover the fakery with lies bullshit and they hide behind their rabid fan base and whilst hiding behind that fan base they ignore how toxic and nasty their own fan base has been to other content creators meanwhile i've said it many times too do you really think that sam and colby if they actually had taken the time to go through some of these videos would appreciate their toxic fan base going after some of these people this is a surprising video this really is Again, I, th I gotta thank Beardo, I gotta really give him credit because I, I did not know this stuff. Good on you. Well, the debunkers are still painted out to be narcissistic, horrible liars. So please do let me know what your thoughts are in the comment section down below. Let, let me know what you think of the video, let me, let me know what you think of this new style of video. Do you want to see more of this or do you just want to see me back in the studio? Let me know your thoughts on the debunk. Has my investigation at the Ancient Ramin ultimately proved that Sam and Colby are liars and fakers? And as always, don't go into other people's comment sections giving any grief. And I'm glad you specified that because, I, I, yeah, um, and I encourage my audience to do the same thing. Seriously, do not be going into other people's comment section and, and giving them any sort of ounce of any hate. We're better than that. Come on, guys. We are better than that. Much love to you. Beardo out. Honesty equals love. We want to spread the message of real love. Honesty is the key.
don't forget that. Honesty. Okay, so there was a lot there. Uh, that really surprised me. Yeah, I did not know that about the sign. I didn't know that kids actually got that loud around there. That would, yeah, automatically debunk the kid voices at the haunted Ram Inn immediately. I would love to see Sam and Colby respond to some of these videos. I really would. I really would, because I think there are some very interesting points that people are making, and they're not going to, because they know if they actually acknowledge it, people are going to start questioning them. So the second they even make a video responding to Biro, responding to some of the talks that I've had, responding to Mythos, responding to anybody, the shape, I mean, anybody, they know they're going to have to like sit down and actually have a full-on conversation about it. Because Guys, let me know what you guys think, and I'm sorry if I repeated myself a lot in this video, Beardo, I'm not... I'm not trying to stutter. I'm not trying to trip over my words as much as I have. I actually woke up not long ago. I'm all jacked up on coffee right now because I chugged like three cups. So I, I apologize if I come off unprofessional right here. But man, I, I got to say much love to you. I appreciate the shit out of you. I, I love that you are honest about what you feel and what you think. The fact that you were there, I would love to see you do more of this stuff. If you if you actually went there, you know, you debunked Sam and Colby because you were at the location. They cannot argue against you at this point. That is 100% awesome. So I would love to see you do more of that stuff. I would love to see you go out to all these paranormal uh, locations and start doing this. Start trying to debunk some of the things they were mentioning in their videos. I think that would be fucking phenomenal. So, of course, again, go support Biro's original video. Link in the description. I mean, seriously, you go and support that video. You go and subscribe to his channel. You get that guy up to 40,000 subscribers as soon as possible. The guy deserves it. He's an absolute badass. Seriously, I think we need to start encouraging more of these honest channels. Yeah, to get bigger. I do. I think it's important. And I'm not saying that because I want, I, I genuinely just want to see people succeed through this. I'm genuinely appreciative of debunkers because, again, it's essential in the paranormal community. If some of these paranormal channels through fakery can be as popular as they are, I'm talking about, I'm a reactor, guys. I'm no debunker. I'm somebody who occasionally will call out BS if I think it's obvious in my face. But these debunkers, mythos, the shape, uh, bad to the bone, uh, Beardo, of course, um, all these people need support they need love go show them love guys until next time i'll see you in the next one keep it retro do take care